The mysterious death of a 22-year-old Iranian woman sparked outrage all over Iran, leading to violent protests. Iran's so-called morality police arrested Marsa Amini in Tehran a week ago for not properly we wearing her hijab or headscarf, which is mandatory for women there. She later died in their custody. In a strong show of a tour de force, women in Iran took to the streets in defiance of their government, cutting off their hair, burning their hijabs, and even taking down posters of the supreme leader, the Ayatollah Khomeini. Iran has been left in unrest as the ongoing anti-government protests have led to at least seven deaths so far. Here to discuss the future for women in the Islamic nation is an Iranian-American activist pushing for regime change. There. Maryam Merma Sadegi, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. So what are women in Iran demanding? Women are in, in Iran, men in Iran, everybody is demanding a wholesale removal of the regime. Um, it's uh, Iran revolution. Uh, protests are being sustained on the streets throughout the country, small towns, large cities, everywhere. Um, labor strikes are uh, expanding and are uh, going to be sustaining the, the street protests. Um, unmistakably, the slogans, the momentum, um, the will of the people is for regime change, revolution. The United States government, U.S. lawmakers, must come to realize that the uh, nuclear deal that is being pursued in Vienna is one, not going to happen, <laughs> or it, if it does happen, it is uh, uh, contrary or um, at the cost of, of U.S. interests. I mean, more and more Democrats in Congress are coming to that realization. Joe Biden himself must know that his team has not been successful in Vienna. What, but what costs uh, the United States and what costs the people of Iran by pursuing that uh, deal is the appeasement of the regime. And if the United States reverses course now, gets on the right side of history, um, backs away from the nuclear negotiations, gets on the side of the Iranian people, it can have, the United States can have a partner um, in a new democratic government in Iran that is going to be ushering in peace for the Middle East and is going to set back uh, the evils of Islamist um, terrorism throughout the world. This is a historic opportunity for the United States. Uh, yes, certainly. And, and you know, I, of course, ideally, um, I would want and so many would want uh, the people of Iran to live under uh, live under self-government, under a government that is respectful of individual rights and liberties and toleration and does not, you know, force Islamic extremism on them. It absolutely lets women go into the streets, not wear hijab, do whatever they want, have the same rights they have here or in other Western countries. But then the question becomes, and we have this long history of, of intervening, intervening militarily, Afghanistan, Iraq, Libya, et cetera, where things have not gone well, uh, where, where, so, so no, okay. So, what is what is different about the situation, um, and and you know what? Given that we don't want any, we, we simply do not. The people of America don't want another you know military commitment, uh, one with a, a nuclear potentially nuclear power. It what should be done? Do military commitment. The Iranian people are out on the streets waging a revolution for their future. There's no need for a military intervention. There's no need for uh, the United States to do anything except to get out of the way of the Iranian people by pursuing a deal that requires daily appeasement of the regime and handing it over billions of dollars in cash, the United States will sustain this regime when the Iranian people are being very successful in overthrowing it. So what's important here is for the United States just to get out of the way of the Iranian people. And Joe Biden's policy right now is standing in their way. Do most Iranians feel the same way, though, about the nuclear deal? Well, most Iranians want to get rid of their regime, and they see that the nuclear deal is going to sustain the regime. Yeah, look, I, I get that, but it, it seems very da daunting, the idea that you know, there will be a, a revolution in the streets 
and then this will happen, and then you know something will replace it that is more acceptable um, to the U.S. or to the people. I mean, look, that that's a great aspiration. We hope that happens. Um, ideally, that would happen. It would be peaceful, etc. Um, but it's still it's very hard to imagine it actually happening. And in the meantime, you know, we want to we we already made an agreement with Iran, and then we broke right. our word on it. We backtracked it, not them. We did that. Right. Uh, the the Trump administration did that. So I can understand you know the, Iran's reluctance to enter into another agreement um, with us. And isn't our you know immediate goal is to is to have better relations with the government of Iran? You, you know. And, Abusive of human rights, though it may be, you know, we, we're forced to deal in the real world where we have to deal with re regimes that we don't like, that have human records rights that we absolutely oppose, because we've seen what the alternative is that we can't really just, you know, force our will on these countries to get them to accept policies that probably all of us would rather they have. What, what, uh, what will are we forcing on the uh, Iranian regime right now? We're being silent. We've been silent on the human rights abuses. If it wasn't for pressure from the Iranian people, Joe Biden and his team wouldn't even be making statements of rhetorical support. They're still abiding by their plan to um, uh, enter into a nuclear deal with this regime, which will require the United States to hand over the regime billions of dollars, as the Obama administration did. Exactly how are we forcing our will on, uh, other than to keep the regime alive? The only thing that, that the Iranian people want is for the United States and other governments to not get in their way as they're bringing down an evil regime. But does the Iranian economy being sanctioned uh, and nuclear stress help create reform, democratic reform, or does it kind of create more hardlining, hardline response from the government? People aren't looking for reform. When the United States entered the JCPOA, it made promises of improved rights and welfare and uh, better uh, economic situation for the Iranian people. Not only didn't that, did, did that not happen, the opposite did, and they came out on the streets. And now we have a super hardliner as president, and Joe Biden still wants to enter a similar actually a worse, a watered-down deal. Yeah, I think the concern, though, is that uh, further isolating the current Iranian government, uh, you know, like, we, you know, we've seen, we're seeing in real time the limits of sanctions and that approach that we might immiserate the people, we might starve the people, we might crash the economy, we might lead to more suffering, but we don't end up dislodging regimes via, via this matter. So I guess that's the, the concern that uh, what Katie's getting at, that it won't even, this approach won't even work. Well, what, what approach exactly? An approach of, of isolating of isolating and immiserating the regime and sanctioning. Well, how has it how has it helped to give them billions of dollars? Well, where have sanctions helped? In what countries? Well, sanctions, sanctions against a regime that abuses the rights of its people and expands uh, terror throughout the world are one of the few mechanisms that democracies have to hold those regimes back. The alternative is war. What do you suggest? Yeah, look, I don't want to give billions of dollars to foreign governments of any kind. I don't, right. I don't think we should. The people's, the American taxpayers' dollars should be spent um, on, on any regime. So I take your point. This, I guess, is money. This is money in exchange for, you know, for a promise of, uh, of, of a, you know, a goal we're trying to achieve, not just like a, a donation to them, but uh, you're, we're giving right. you this in exchange for you know you playing ball in terms of the diplomacy we want, in terms of the, the nuclear policy we want. Um, yeah, but handing them handing them over a lot billions of dollars hasn't hasn't stopped their nuclear program. Mm -hmm. The only thing that set the nuclear program back is sabotage and espionage and assassinations. Uh, not only has uh, the JCPOA not uh, controlled the nuclear program. Uh, the regime has actually expanded, and, uh, and it just uh, the only thing that the JCPOA did was embolden the regime. Let's not forget that while the JCPOA was in effect, the uh, regime um, was responsible for the slaughter of hundreds of thousands of innocent people in Syria. Mm. Well, Miriam, we so appreciate yeah, you joining you. us and giving your perspective on this issue. Um, yeah, thanks for joining us. Yeah. Thank you. And we'll have more rising right after this.